So this is what we call a UART connection. Now UART stands for Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter and I'm pretty certain I pronounced that second word totally wrong. But in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to connect these UARTs to your TV box. Now if you're interested, UARTs are very cheap, especially these type because they're using very cheap components and you can get them on eBay, Amazon for very little money. And it gives you an opportunity to develop your skills, maybe if you're getting into developing and programming, and it gives you an opportunity to debug your work and look into if there's any issues going on with your development and if there's any issues going on with your current firmware. I'm certainly going to show you a few different examples of this. Anyway, I'm going to be showing you how to connect your UART to your TV box. So when you receive your UART connector, you'll notice a number of different connections. So on the top here, we have a 3.3 volt connection. We also have one that says TXD, RXD, ground and 5 volts. Now for this video, we only need the middle three. So we only need TXD, RXD and ground. And you get, should get these um, pinout connectors as well. So we need to connect it to our device. Now on our device, we will have a connection somewhere on the board that says something like what we can see here. So let's move over to the actual device now and have a look at that. Okay, so I've chosen a board that I know has problems on it. It's the Sunvel H3. Although I really like this board and it does all sorts of different things, the firmware overcomes on it, it's pretty shocking. And I'll show you using UART all the different issues that this has. But for now, I'm going to show you how to connect it to your board. And the majority of boards that I've seen normally have these connections. And just have a look around your board. Obviously, you're going to have to take your box apart to actually access it. And you should see somewhere on your board these connections you might have more than me you might have less than me um, but normally you should have a, a ground a tx an rx and a five or three volt connector we don't need to play around with the three volt or five volt connector we just need to ignore that and mine are clearly marked yours will probably be remarked you're right next to it you have the names of the actual port my port names have, have been applied up top here but you know it's pretty simple and straightforward to actually read which one's which so the top one here is ground it says there it might not be picking up perfectly on the camera underneath that we have tx we have rx and then three volts like i said before so this is a ground tx rx and then the three volt which we just ignore so let's connect our ground from our uart to our ground on our board but this is where it gets a bit confusing because the RX and the TX need to be switched the other way around. So we need to take the RX from the UART and connect it to the TX on the board. And then we need to take the TX on the UART and connect it to the T RX on the board. Now you can connect, connect it however which way you want. I've just done it like this just for simplicity. I'm going to take this apart in a second and connect it to another board. I don't particularly want to solder it. If you have some pins or anything like that, which just makes things a little bit easier, do it that way. I've just kind of botched it, kind of. Yeah, it's a bit of a mess the way I've done it. It's not the best. Just as long as there's space in between each connection and there's nothing touching, you should be fine. Just bear in mind, just, you know, remember that the TX and RX have to be switched around. So TX on the board and then to RX on the UART, which we looked at just before. And then again, from the TX on the board to the RX on the UART. So anyway, once you've done that, we can move on to the next part. So the first thing we need to do, we need to obviously insert that USB UART into our computer. Now there's a few different things before that will actually run and we need to install a program from Silicon Labs. So I'll give the link in the description of course. I and mean, this is basically the driver software for the UART connector. And you can just go on here 
and you can go down, download to Windows 10, Windows 7, and so on, XP, etc., etc. So install that. Once you've done that, then we can move on to the next part, which is to install a program called Putty. Again, I shall leave the links in the description to where you get Putty. I've covered Putty a couple of different times on this channel. So once you've installed Putty, uh, we can move on. So load up Putty for me. So I want you to load up Putty. And then I want you to have a look just along here, and you'll see raw, towner, our login, SSH, and serial. So I want you to click on serial for me. Now, what it says here is serial line and COM1, and then speed 9600. Now, we don't know which COM it is, so that basically we don't know which COM port that the UART's connected to. We don't know yet. And the speed, so I want you to change the speed to 11. 5200. So this is basically the speed at which the computer talks to the actual board. It's a matter of bit. We'll just make sure you've done that. Um, I think for rock chip devices, so if you're doing this on a rock chip device, I believe the speed should be set to 15,000. So if you've got a rock chip device, make sure you set it to that. Now the next thing we need to do, we need to find out what compile we are connected to. So what I want you to do is just in your search bar, just type in device manager and it should bring up this. And then what I want you to do, obviously once you've installed your drivers, like I showed you before from the Silicon Lab, so the UART, I want you to have a look for ports, com and LPT. So click on that. And hopefully if all the drivers installed properly and everything like that, it should say Silicon Lab CP210 times USB to UART bridge. And then at the end of it, it should give you the COM port. So mine's on COM5. Now, if it hasn't connected or done the driver installed properly, it won't recognize it and it'll just say unknown device. But hopefully everything's not went nice and smooth for you. And yeah, so mine's on COM5. So the next thing we need to do is we need to go back to putty and then click type in which com it is. Yours might not be COM5, yours might be COM2, COM3, whatever. But yeah, once we've done that, we can then click open. And you'll be given this this blank, blank um, uh, box. Next thing we need to do, we need to plug in our device into the power supply. So once we plug it in, you'll see what happens. So I'm just about to plug it in now. And as you can see, we start getting code. And this is the initial boot of the system. And if you've seen this on screen, you've done everything perfectly fine. And yeah, we can move on now. As we look at the code that's displayed, we can have a look at a few different things. So the main thing I want to point out is that on this particular box, the firmware is Android Nougat. Unfortunately, it's under developed version and the actual manufacturers have throttled the device and we can see that just happening right in front of us now the cpus have been shut down because the device is basically getting too hot and the system has been programmed if it's going to get this to this heat level shut down each core to maintain a steady heat Unfortunately, that's really bad because it does throttle the system and it makes things slower as well as that you're probably going to be wanting to fit a fan of some sort to this device to keep it cool and basically the manufacturers cheaped out on this and they have removed the possibility of connecting a fan etc just purely based on cost and so they've done this to compensate so i wanted to actually show you a few more examples of this type of thing but unfortunately my uart broke I snapped one of the pins off when taking it out of the PC, so I'll have to order another one. But hopefully this gave you a good example of how to connect your UART to your Amlogic or Winner rock chip device. And it gives you guys who maybe get into this sort of thing, maybe want to debug some stuff, or just understand a bit more about how things happen you know, under the hood, then hopefully this has helped you. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a like. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And thanks again for watching, and we shall see you very, very soon.